Welcome Algebra 2, this is section 5.2, Factoring Polynomials. The essential question is, what information do you, do you need to sketch a graph of a polynomial function? Let's begin. So factoring, so there's a lot of going on in this section, and it's really deep, and I'm going to try to go over what I think is the highlights, all right? So there's more to it in the book, but we get done what we do. Uh, first of all, we factor polynomials sometimes because we want to find the zeros. And this is very similar to factoring quadratic equations. So I'm going to just do an example right here. If I wanted to factor x cubed minus 2x squared minus 15x, this is one you've probably done before. First thing you look at and you see, can I factor out a GCF? In this case, you can. You can factor out the greatest common factor, which is x from everything. So I factor on x. What I'm left with is x squared minus 2x minus 15. And at this point, you can factor this trinomial here in the parentheses. And I don't care how to, if you want to make the x, if you want to do it other ways, mental math. Basic idea, though, is you have to have two numbers that multiply to negative 15 and add to negative 2, which are going to be x minus 5 and x plus 2. So our factored form is x times x minus 5 times x plus 2. So that's what I want you to do when you just factor. Now, sometimes we, want to, we can still apply the zero product property to polynomials, even though there's beyond x squared. So if I wanted to find the zeros in this equation, y equals quantity x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3, I set the y equal to 0 and get x plus 2 times x minus 1 times x minus 3. And then I solve each of those factors, set them equal to 0. So what that will look like, so each factor I solve equal to 0. And that's going to be x plus 2 equals 0, equals 0. x minus 1 equals 0 and x minus 3 equals 0. Solving each of those, I get x equals negative 2, x equals positive 1, and x equals positive 3. So my zeros are right here, negative 2, 1, and, ne and 3. And if I graph this equation, it's right here, which makes sense, because my zeros are here at negative 2. That's where it crosses. It has a 0. y is 0 in this case. It's crossing the x-axis. And I got a 0 right here at 1, because it's crossing again. And I got a 0 right here at 3. So that makes sense. Now we can use the zeros to kind of go backwards and create that polynomial function. So what, should, what is a cubic polynomial function in standard form with zeros negative 2, 2, and 3? So if my zeros are those, then the equation is going to be for a 0 of negative 2, you're going to have to have x plus 2. A 0 of 2, you're going to have to have an x minus 2. And a 0 of 3, you're going to have to have an x minus 3. Now I'm going to write this in standard form. So I can't just leave it like this. I have to multiply these out. So the first thing, I'm going to multiply the first two out. See so x minus 2 and x minus 3. And I'm going to use FOIL method. That's going to be x squared. x times negative 3 is x, negative 3x. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And negative 2 times 3 is positive 6. And that all combines to x squared minus 5x plus 6, multiplying that by x plus 2. Now I've got to multiply x plus 2 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. And I don't care how you do this. Sometimes when I get these bigger ones, I like creating these boxes. So it kind of looks like this. I'm going to create a, a 2 by 3 box. It just helps me keep organized. You don't have to. But if you want to, go right on ahead. So I'm going to put the terms on the trinomial on top, x squared minus 5x plus 6, and the binomial on the side, x and positive 2. And you multiply columns and rows. This is x cubed, negative 5x squared, positive 6x, 2x squared, negative 10x, and 12. And then we add everything in the boxes. And usually the nice thing is that the diagonals usually add up, combine like terms. So I'm at, what I have is x cubed, 2x squared minus 5x squared is negative 3x squared. Negative 10x plus 6x is negative 4x, and plus 12. So this is my cubic polynomial function in standard form, right like that. And if I want to, sometimes I actually want to sketch these types of things. So let's do a rough sketch of that function. Now when I say sketch, I don't mean a perfect graph. Do your, your x, y axis like this. And I know I have my zeros. My zeros are going to be at 2, so I'm going to put a 0. Say 1, 2, and this is 2. I have a 0 at 3, so I'm going to make that 3. And I have a 0 at negative 2, so I'm going to put that right here, negative 2. My zeros are going to be at those three spots. So I'm going to draw dots right there. And what does that look like? Well, going back from the last section, I want to figure out what my end behavior is in this case. And that will help me figure out what that graph looks like. 
the end behavior, uh, since my a is going to be odd, no, a is 1, so a is going to be positive, and my degree is 3, so the degree is going to be odd. If I have a positive and a degree of 3, let's look back at our old notes. And the old notes say a positive a and an odd degree. So an odd degree and a positive a is a down and up. So we're going to be down in this case on the left and up over here. So I know from an up, I'm going up from that 3, and I'm going down from that 2. And the polynomial has these shapes that go up and down, kind of rotates. So I'm following that pattern. I know that I have to do something like this and something like this. And that's a rough sketch of what it looks like. Not perfect at all. But that's what I'm looking for if I want to sketch. All right, another concept we have with polynomial functions is relative maximums and minimums. What is a relative maximum in? It's, it's basically the, the, the tops and bottoms of these, these you know, the, the tops and bottoms in relative areas. This is not the maximum of the whole function because the maximum goes up to infinity. This is not the minimum of the whole function because it goes down to negative infinity. But these are relative just to this area. So basically, where it kind of peaks or the valleys are. These are also the turning points, if you remember from last lesson. So the relative maximum in this case would be right here. A relative minimum would be right over here. These are the same, these are actually the turning points. So these happen at all turning points, where it's going from positive to negative direction or negative to positive. OK, what about what in cases you have multiple zeros? So this is a case where you have multiple zeros. Be when I say multiple zeros, it's because you have two zeros at negative 1 right here, because that's squared. And you have three zeros right here for negative, for x equals positive 3. So you have a different behavior in that case. We don't just say our, our solutions are negative 1, 1, and 3, because we have a, a double negative 1 and a triple positive 3. So what does that change for the graph? And this is the graph over here and what it actually looks like. So here's the rules for that. If you have one zero, it cuts through it's cuts through that point just like a line. So in the case when there's only one zero for you know x is zero, it looks kind of like a straight line. It just cuts straight through. And that's this case right here. It's just cutting straight through. If you have two zeros, it touches the zero like a vertex. It kind of looks like a quadratic function or para parabola. So I'm gonna like quadratic or like parabola. So it has that kind of behavior. And that's the case for x, x equals negative 1 in our case. This was x equals 1, and x equals negative 1. So what happens right here, notice if you just looked at this isolated area right here, it kind of looks like a parabola, and that's like the vertex. That's the minimum. So it looks like a parabola. Now if you have a triple 0, like in this case where x equals 3, you have cubic behavior. And cubics, and probably haven't seen those that much, they kind of look like this. It's kind of like a parabola, but like half of it's been twisted down. And that happens right at this case of x equals 3. You can notice it's kind of going up, and then it goes up. So it's like curved down this way and curved up this way. So that's cubic behavior. I know a lot of that was due, and that's probably hard to digest. We'll do more in class. But here's some examples. Pause the video. All right, what is the factor form? So in this case, I'm going to factor out the greatest common factor which is going to be x. So the rest, what I'm left with is x squared minus x minus 12. And factoring the, quad, the trinomial right here, what multiplies to negative 12 and adds to negative 1, that's going to be x minus 4 and x plus 3 times x. So there's my answer. Let's try the next one. What are the zeros? Let's sketch the function. Pause the video. All right, my zeros. Well, I have three factors right here. And this is gonna, my zero is going to be x equals 0. In this case, x minus 3 equals 0. So x equals 3. In this case, x plus 5 equals 0. So x equals negative 5. So my zeros are 0, 3, and negative 5. So I'm going to sketch those right here. This is x equals 0. And then I'm going to go to x equals 3, and that's going to happen out here. And negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's about negative 5, and that happens right here. Now I want to sketch this function, so I have to figure out my end behavior. Again, for end behavior, if you look at your a, well, you've got to figure out what your a is. So I'm going to have to multiply this all out. Um, so I'll rewrite that equation. x times x minus 3, x plus 5. I'll do the work down here again. OK, I wanna, I'm going to multiply 
two things at a time. I'm going to multiply these two parts first. So if you FOIL that out, that becomes x squared times plus 5x minus 3x is plus 2x. And negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. All that times x. I distribute this x back in. I get x cubed plus 2x squared minus 15x. All right, so looking at my end behaviors here, my a, the coefficient for my highest term, is going to be positive number, because that's 1. And your degree in this case is 3, so degree is odd. When you have a positive a and an odd degree, according to that, odd and positive, I get down and up. So my end behavior down this is going to be down here, and then up over here. And if these are my zeros, I know I have to cross every zero. So the sketch will look something like that. And that's close enough. Try the next one, pause the video. All right, so which are the zeros, which are multiple zeros, and sketch the graph. So to find the zeros, I've got to factor this first. So I'm going to factor all these three terms. I can factor on x. So it's going to be x times x squared minus 2x plus 4. And this part right here, trinomials, what multiplies to positive 4 and adds to negative 4? negative 4, not negative 2. That is going to be x minus 2 and x minus 2. Negative 2 and negative 2 multiplied to positive 4. And I can combine those into an x minus 2 squared, so we'll get x times x minus 2 squared. All right, so what are the zeros? My zeros in this case, I split this up in 2. x equals 0 and x equals positive 2. Which are multiple zeros? Well, so my multiple, so 2 is a multiple 0. Okay, and I want to sketch this graph. All right, so again, you're just doing a rough sketch. I'm going to write my axis really quick like this. And I know my zeros are going to happen at x equals 0 and x equals 2. Okay, I know there's, it's going to intercept right there and there. And I know this 2 is, well, next thing I want to look at is what is my end behavior here? So my end behavior, you're going to get your a is a coefficient of 1, so it's positive. And your degree is 3, so your degree is odd. And following that table again, a of positive and is odd is down and up. So I know this is going to be down, and I know this is going to be up. And since this is a double zero, the double zeros have a quadratic behavior. So it's actually going to go up like this, and then not go through this point. It's just going to go just like that. So it touches that point like it's a, like a vertex. It's a relative minimum. And then it goes back up. So there's the sketch. That's it.